really for me. So that's the beginning of, of what you really need to think of when you start thinking of you know, acting. What people expect from you. Because a lot of acting is preparation. I mean, when you all came in here, you heard me checking the mic by doing tongue twisters. Peter Piper, the pickle pepper, bigger, 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 bigger peppers. Peter Piper, the pickle pepper, bigger, 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 bigger peppers. Where's the bag of pickle peppers? The Peter Piper, the pickle pepper, bigger bit. That sort of thing is something you do with a lot of practice. It's kind of um, you know, and, and even before that, when you were young, when I was younger, when this guy was younger, apparently we had to do that. Uh, oh yeah, see, you all still do that. It, it, you do that because it warms you up, it brings you to a point where you can just kind of do these sorts of things naturally, which is how this sort of improv acting comes from. A lot of early preparation. So, when it comes to cosplay acting, you have to think immediately what your character would do, or what this character is like, or even better, what the people expect from the situation that the character would be in. Because there, there'd be a situation where you wouldn't expect said character to be in. Um, say, uh, I don't know, um, Vash to Stampede in a, well I guess Vash to Stampede's pretty large on that. That didn't work. Um, <laughs> I don't know, Pokemon. Someone from Pokemon being in a horror situation. But you would expect, say, that young girl in a horror movie to be in the situation. And you can just easily cut and paste, okay, Pokemon chick, horror chick, done. <laughs> it, it works, and then you, you can just go from there. So, let's do some exercises for people. Actually, first let's talk some more, because talking more before we do exercises is smarter, and I don't have to have a bunch of people up here going, <laughs> No, really, when you're confused, you make that noise. <laughs> okay, so, um, let's pick a character who's in the room. Someone, someone raise your hand. You in the back with the, the thing. What are you? Frank West from Dead Rising. Yeah! <laughs> Our techie likes that. <laughs> Dead Rising is a good game. I haven't actually played it, but I've seen people play it. So, zombies and all that good stuff. Um, what kind of character is Frank West? Oh, uh, go, go with the running of the thing. Oh, okay. Stop. Like this. You get a microphone. I get a microphone? Yeah. You do. I got a minion. I mean, a friend. <laughs> For sure. Yeah, a minion. Okay. Frank is a photojournalist, and he covers wars, many wars. I've covered he wars, you know. He uses pretty much any weapon he can get. He will pick up a trash can and throw it at a zombie. That's he what will... he does. But what kind of person is he? What kind of, if, when he, in the cutscenes, when he talks to someone, is he gruff? Is he natural? Is he nice? Is he like, oh, hello, how can I help you? <laughs> it's like, there's zombies out there, and we're making a barricade. Let me give you a hand. He's not. He's uh, cool, calm, collected, and a ladies' man. Cool, calm, com what? Cool, calm, collected, and a ladies' man. Cool, calm, collected, and a ladies' man. So, as that is the general archetype of what he is, you can cut and paste that into a different situation. You can immediately put him into, say, a romance comedy. It'd be weird, but you would know how he would act. <laughs> well, no, that's the part that would make it the comedy part. You're like, oh, he's fighting zombies. He fought zombies, he's covered wars, and now he's facing love. <laughs> like, that's the sort of thing that, that you have to think in your mind. So, were he to face a woman, he would, how, he would react in a cool, calm, collective way. Yeah. Very nice. Let's have another character. Um, right to your right. Sanji, One Piece. What? Sanji. Sanji from One Piece. Cool, cool. Mm -hmm. What does Sanji look? Another ladies' man. Um, um, he, he's a pirate, so. He's pirate? And chef. Pirate, chef. Pirate, chef. Jack of all trades. Jack of all trades. <laughs> he, he's smoking all the time, yeah. or sucking on the lollipop, depending on which version yeah. you're watching. <laughs> So, but these are things that he does. Right. He's... Oh, I'm easily love-struck by the ladies. Easily he loves, loves the ladies, but then they can... He loves the ladies. Practically kill him with a nosebleed, so... Yeah. What? Well, that sucks. Um, <laughs> <laughs> okay, so we, we've got the idea of a, of a, you know, 
kind of a, a perverty kind of like, oh, lady, <laughs> kind of thing. Can, can we get any more? Like, if you, for instance, how does he interact with uh, Zoro? <laughs> um, rather generally irritated, usually aggravated by him. And he's kind of generally a smooth guy, though, but so I was really good at getting on his nerves. So he's he gets on the nerves, or he he gets on other people's nerves. Is he annoying? <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay, yeah. Okay, so we have, we have a little annoying, perverty kind of dude. I mean, there are other characteristics that you immediately think of, like the long legs and and the, the smoking lollipop thing. But you know, these are things that a person does as opposed to what they are. So then we get like a annoying perverty thing. <laughs> okay. Um one more. Oh, Someone there, right there with the pink. Me? Yes. Oh cool. I don't know what that is on your head, but it's pink, so stand up. You don't have to stand up, it's nice that you do. Okay, sit down. <laughs> I'm already up, I'll stay up. Okay, I am Mary Amethyst Star. Mary Amethyst Star. Star and Nobi Ico Archer Janeway Picard Sue. Oh, I remember you! <laughs> okay, that's great, because I don't. I'm from a webcomic. A what? A webcomic? Web yeah. Oh, okay, that's great, because yeah. I have no idea about this. It actually helps me, because I actually have to ask, who are you? <laughs> I am an ensign on the USS Enterprise that Starfleet has been trying to get rid of for a long time because I'm really annoying and I'm convinced that everyone, absolutely everyone, male, female, whatever you are, is in love with me and I am absolutely perfect in every way. Oh. So that's, that's even easier because that's just literally the archetypical Mary Sue. Yeah. <laughs> I'm, I'm sure people have heard this term before. Anyone here not heard the term before? Should I describe it? Would anyone like me to describe it? Yes, please. Yeah, there you go. Mary Sue is a great term because it, it's a some kind of a uh, fan fiction-y character that you kind of make up that can pretty much solve all the world's problems just by being there. Um, you know, they, they get neat. powers as the plot demands it, or everyone's in love with them, or you know they're just smart enough at the right time to do X. Um, oh, oh no, 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 no! She's not smart. She's annoying, and everyone tries to kill her. Yes, but that, but I'm assuming that's because the web comic. I'm assuming that's because the webcomic uses that as a comedy point of saying, ha ha, Mary Sue is, let's make fun of them. But a Mary Sue themselves would be, you know, always smart, always right, always capable, that sort of thing. And you know you're reading a bad fan fiction when you run into one of these. Mm -hmm. And when I was like eight, I would do this all the time. I'd be like, man, I can ride a Gundam and be all this cool stuff. And then I'd be like, you know, when I'm 13, looking at it going, what? <laughs> I was a sad kid because my mom died in the tutorial, actually. I don't even know how to play Final Fantasy XIII. My mom dies in the tutorial. Yeah. It's okay, because in Final Fantasy XIII too, I come out with a gunship and I'm like, yeah! So, it, it's cool. Um, and I get taller. I'm not taller. I'm short. I'm standing on this stage for a reason, because if I get down, you're all going to go, where did he go? Oh my god, he has no knees! Fine. Someone other than Waldo. Well, no. I was getting dangerously close to the, the not PG-13 thing. Yes, in the back of the cowboy hat. Who are you? Well, I'm Apple Jackson. Apple Jack, all right. Apple Jack, you come up here with the microphone. And then one more person. Yes, who are you? I'm sorry? That's why we have a microphone. Leslie! I mean, Hawkeye! Reason! Lieutenant! Ienzo, from Birth by Sleep. Oh, okay. See, another one I don't know. These Pokemon people know things that I don't know. <laughs> I, I was having this conversation with, with my photographer earlier where we were like, I, we don't, we're so old now, we don't know what these young people are watching. You know, who are these kids? Uh, oh, I see. And then we watched, like, we watched reruns of Yu-Gi-Oh! and we're like, oh, what are we watching as a kid? No, I don't. You can, you can turn that off. I mean, unless you want to, we can use it as a spotlight, a really weird green spotlight. <laughs> okay, 
So, um, first of all, Applejack is real apples, which makes me hungry because I've had breakfast. <gasps>
See, you can work with that. You can work with something, because you, would you expect that to be something that Enzo would respond with? If, we're co if, if confronted with the whole, your parents are dead. <laughs> no? Yes? I honestly don't know, because I, I don't, I, I don't know. How old are you? Seven-ish. Seven? Yeah. You're working in a lab? Yeah. That's against child labor. Yeah. <laughs> There's also safety hazards going on. I don't know actually do anything. I'm a really, really minor character in the games. I don't even have any speaking lines, so I don't really know what I do in there. Don't Turn really. to one no, you have, you have been, been to save you in this little area. Yeah. Okay, so, so she's a thing with, she's a plot coupon. Yeah, okay. I'm just gonna be cute. You hang up coats. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so, we have a general idea of who Enzo is and who Applejack is. Um, what what sort of circumstance, for instance, would these two characters meet? Yes. In the best fanfic ever. <laughs> <laughs> There's a lot of credit you Pokemon people build up with me of you knowing things I didn't know. You just kind of squandered it. <laughs> At a farmer's market. At a farmer's market. You're from Boston too, aren't you? <laughs> At a farmer's market. So you know about the cars I was talking about earlier, don't go in the street. <laughs> it's true, right? Uh, very true. Oh, yeah. um, okay. So, <laughs> farmer's market. That actually works. That actually does work. Wow. Her lab's doing a study on talking ponies. I'm sorry, say that again? Her lab's doing a study on talking ponies. At a farmer's market? <laughs> <laughs> Why not? That could also work. Experimental apples. That's very that's very specific though. You want to go as big as possible. You want to go, you know, like when you go to an improv comedy club, they're like, give me a location, and you're like, your mom's bedroom, and you're like, oh, that's really funny. and then you're like, okay, let's go with uh, your know, grocery store. You know, it's a lot. You can't just be like, mom's bedroom. Okay, <laughs> yeah, so we have a farmer's market. Where? So right from there, you immediately think, say, farmer's market. She's shopping, she's selling stuff. You already have positions, you already have a situation where they would actually meet and talk because it goes, oh, you have apples, I want apples. I mean, there'd actually be words besides that, but that's the general gist. Because well, you, can, you can kind of reduce these sorts of things to bare math. And the math there is, person A has apples to sell, person B eats apples and wants to buy. And from there, there's so many opportunities. They can get into an argument. Um, she can feel sorry for poor orphan Enzo and give her some apples, which will cause conflict. You know, if, like you can't give away free merchandise. He says as he eats an apple, give it to him freely. <laughs> Bad business. I should have done that. So I need to chew. <laughs> Say something funny. <laughs> no pressure. That's why you're the video. That doesn't mean I can say things that are funny. I'm just here to serve you. <laughs> Close right. <laughs> um, okay, I think we, we've had enough that we can do with, with these two. Let's get two new people up. Thank you for helping. Happy Lovey Girl. <laughs> Who are you? I'm France from Italia. Woo! Adorable. And not Deadpool. We'll, we'll use you later. Because Deadpool's ripe with so many insanities that we can use it a lot later. Um. No, took all the credit for Pokemon earlier. Um. You in the back with the kitty ears. <laughs> I'm Harley Hink Fujioka. Harley Hink Fujioka from? Born High School Host Club. Yeah. Oh. Okay, so, starting with the person on the left here. Tell us about who you are. Um, I am... Someone who will hit on anything beautiful, even if it's not alive. <laughs> uh, actually, a character description, he will. Um, he is not 
strong at all. And he whines a lot. Uh, He's got guts though, right? <laughs> uh, he starts fights a lot. Oh, yeah, pretty close to one of those. Okay. Well, we'll leave that one out for now. <laughs> so, so we have we have a whiny, cocky person who likes into fights and thinks that they're all that, um, but isn't. Which is great for storylines and, and things like that because you get the. There's so many things a person can get into. So many hijinks of like, well, yes, I can handle that, and then something happens. Like, no, I can't. <laughs> oh crap! I have to actually do stuff. Well, um. <laughs> Um, look, it's a distraction! <laughs> Get away! Yes. So, those are always fun to play with, and you have lots of opportunities. Miss Harley? I am a poor commoner who is very smart and got into a rich school and broke a base, so now I'm stuck being a host. Pretending to be a male. Okay, so, that's what you do. Yeah, and apparently many guys are attracted to me. And... That's the Okay, so we have we have we have I'm sorry. That's the main stuff. Okay, so we have a lot of stuff there of what you do and what you like are there for in the story. Uh, poor commoner gets put up into a rich situation and then forced to do work, and then you say a lot of characters are attracted to you. Uh, that's that's almost like a, a plot device than a character, because then you get to a situation where um, it's more about the people around you and how they interact with you than you yourself. Yeah. Um. Is this an accurate portrayal? Yeah. 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 I actually used to watch this too, so yeah, it, it kind of is. <laughs> yeah. Um. And that right there is both good and bad. As a character, it's almost not. I mean, it, it drives the story forward, because you need to have devices like this. You need to have the damsel in distress, so that the, uh, you know, Link can run up the castle and, you know, punch people in the face. Um, yeah. Or you need to have the, uh, the kidnapped little brother who's like, Help me! And then, you know, you go rescue that. Um, like Labyrinth. Uh, and Labyrinth. Um, <laughs> don't do that. <laughs> Please, don't do that. Um, this is freak me out. Um, first is all naked too. Uh, sorry, I can't slide. Um, they drive the story forward. But then, if you want to use them specifically as a character, you end up having that same trouble again. Of well, how does how would this person react? Can you really tell? Because the story so far has been how the other people react to her. Um, so that, that's a problem with the acting there. Um, but it does give you actually freedom as well. Because you can pull something out of nowhere, and then it's now the duties of those around you to respond to it as said plot device. So, what kind of situation would our I'm ladies man no, I'm not, kind of thing <laughs> and, and our plot device? Why? I'm, I'm just, you know, a little happy, me, doing my thing. Be it. Yes, with the um, other package. <coughs> um, I, I like, always need to, like, Frank's staying on her, and uh, being like, yeah, okay, she's kind of, like, serious. Sorry, say that again? Like, microphone. <laughs> okay, well, I could totally picture Frank's, like, hitting on her, and since he's kind of, like, a serious, Character just being like, yeah, okay, and the advances just keep on going horribly for France, yeah. Okay. So, but that's more, that, that's a scenario. It's good, but where can you go from there? I want you to actually play, play that one out. How would that, how would she respond then? How would she respond? Yeah. Um, probably something like, or what are the ways that she can respond? There's, a, there's many answers to that question. Huh? 
There's yeah. many ways to answer that question. Sorry, the apple is good. He'd probably just be like, um, okay, and kind of like ignore him or walk away. Maybe like hit him in the face, I don't know. <laughs> I know, but she usually only like yells at Tom and you know, like other people do what she's like saying. You know, there's a, there's a whole other like, panel here. You can talk to each other. <laughs> no, they're also... Wait, there are other people here? Surprise! <laughs> <laughs> Where did you all come from? around the wing and your glasses will break now. Okay, so, so we have the, you know, walking away, which kind of ends the scene. We have slapping, which is good. You don't actually have to act it out, but it's cute that you are. <laughs> which causes conflict, which, um, you know, faced with, with the idea of like, oh, I am not the, the greatest gift to man, God's greatest gift to womankind, you know, that sort of thing. You know, how would, how would, you know, person respond? Person, name, forgot, name? France. France. Like the country? France, yeah. Oh. France, the time, all countries? Yeah, so France. Oh, okay. Yeah. Um, France, if he was slapped, would probably either start kind of like wussy fighting, <laughs> or, or would continue to try, or walk away. But he probably wouldn't walk away. He would just probably keep on trying. I, I like what you said first about the wussy fighting. Not because it's funny. Well, it is funny. <laughs> but because that actually opens up something in common between the two. Where this kind of wussy fighting... <laughs> Good minion. <laughs> um, this kind of wussy fighting between the two can easily devolve into one of those um, like defeat means friendship things, where where like you you fight and then you realize you've got stuff in common and you actually grow friends and realize how close you know like that, which is an entirely different thing. Like oh, this isn't someone I should seduce. This is someone who I can view as an equal. <laughs> Reducing the character to like a trait, so we want to we want to we want to go with the whole play thing of going out there of everyone and seeing what the person would do in that situation. So that's one one scenario. Yes, very excited to say something. Me? Yeah. I was gonna say just what what was the situation in which they met? Um, the situation of given was apparently <laughs> from as <laughs> No, that was, was the previous scenario. Yeah, she was hitting on... France was hitting on the other girl. How, how would France uh, hit on girls? How does he? Does he... Does he cop a feel off them? Does he say... <laughs> he, not, not, no, 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 Not that kind of yet. Okay, uh, does, he offer, does he offer to take her out for coffee? Does he call her out with kitty ears? Well, Probably from afar, make like one of those faces like, I'm interested, and then you're like... <laughs> and then approach. In a crowded room where she can hardly be seen? Yeah. Oh. And approach from afar, stalk the prey. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, that's not to be great, but that, that starts as great, because you get the, you, get the, you can view it from two different angles here, where, you know, in, in Franco vision, it's like, the crowd parts and everyone's like, oh, look at these two people, it is great. And then from, from her vision, it's like... <laughs> so would he really stand out as being out from the crowd? Nobody's wearing it. That's totally fashionable. I think, he would, I think he would stand out very, very obviously. And so how would you react? I'm scared. <laughs> Would you run away in ter terror or just turn the other cheek? I would try to ignore him. And your next move? If he gets too close, slap him. No, I was talking to Frank. I'd probably just continue to speak or get closer. <laughs> probably. With it all seriousness, these are the questions I'm, I'm going to ask, but I'm eating an apple, so if you want to keep going. <laughs> <laughs> 
Okay, quiet on the set. <laughs> so, uh, you, you you approach her? Yes. Okay. What's your name again? Haruki. What's your name? Haruki. Haruki? Haruki. Haruki. Okay, uh, how do you, again, how do you respond to his, uh, what should I say, his uh, persistence? Are you flattered? No, I'm very annoyed. Very annoyed. How do you, how do you uh, emote them? A to C. What? <laughs> you what? I said what? I didn't hear your question. How do you emote that? How do you show that you're very annoyed? I would try to back away from him slowly so he doesn't notice. And where is this again? We did not say. And in dance, in crowded room, in the middle of the hall, these are the sort of things where um, setting, ha setting usually or sometimes has a, a significant portion of what's going to happen. We went to the whole Applejack, um, sad Enzo guy um, thing, where the whole the whole uh, setting had a big play on why they were interacting. So again, if it was a dance hall, it'd be noisy. So, so yeah. So he'd have to be he'd have to be saying something pretty loudly. Which is always great because the music will always on. cut out when when the right word, when the wrong words are being said. The music will always cut. It's like you can't hear a word I'm saying, can you? Ah, I I pee myself. Oh god, the music stopped. <laughs> always will happen. Uh, that's the sort of thing that you will ex that people expect, or people would want to see, or people would laugh at. I mean, I, I just said it as a fake situation. You all laughed at it. So I mean, the sort of thing that would happen. Um, Okay, I'm pretty much done with this, so I can keep going. Um, thank you, Applejack. <laughs> thank you for you, too. Uh, we can get more physical stuff now, with people actually moving and doing things. Yay! 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 Um, let's get Deadpool here. <laughs> and someone's awesome. really excited to talk to Deadpool. So. <laughs> All equipped and everything. <laughs> That's awesome. Oh, that is a piece. That is one of those things. Ooh, hello. Oh, he's bonded all nice. Okay, so we have Deadpool. Anyone here not know who Deadpool is? I'm not Spider-Man. <laughs> sometimes he is. That's actually the thing. He sometimes he is. Sometimes he, one time he was, and we got very sad. So yeah, Deadpool is a Marvel Comics character who is pretty much fourth wall breaking incarnate. Um, and insane. Anything else you want to say about Deadpool? Where's the mic? Uh, right now? Yes. We need you to speak to the mic. We need you to speak to the mic. Hello. So, oh, oh, oh. Right. Right. Oh, okay, so we have Deadpool. Yes, please, go ahead. I'm Deadpool. I'm a mercenary for hire. I've got quite the mouth. I like to talk a lot. I'm the kind of guy who makes sneak eyes say, shut up. But, um, you know, I just, I travel the world, I meet people, and then I kill them. <laughs> That's what you do, who you are. Who am I? Yes, this is the difference between what you do and who you are, as I've been, you know, pushing in this panel. So, we know that you talk a lot, which is a great character trait, because talking a lot is good. I talk a lot, and I'm doing it right now. But, besides that, what else do you do? What else are you? What else, you know, what kind of personality do you have? What kind of characteristics can you say? Personality? Yes. I don't really get along with people. I mean, I, I, I kill people, you know? I mean, one moment I could be like, oh, buddy, buddy with a guy, and then next I'll just shoot him in the back or something. You're annoying. <laughs> yes, I am. <laughs> so talks a lot is annoying. Um, the whole very physical thing, what with murking, 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 murking. murking. selling yourself. Um, yes. The, okay, good. Let's, let's get the next person. And you are? Hi, my name is Elsie, and I'm from the series uh, The World That God Only Knows. Um, let's see, I am really naive, um, really nice, um, kind of incredibly clumsy, um, but I also have superpowers, which helps um, 
things like at times. Um, Are you clumsy superpower? <coughs> yeah, um, I'm, a, I'm a demon hunter. Demon hunter? Yeah. Are you? Okay, because spaces are very important. You said I'm a demon hunter. I'm a demon hunter. Because if you say, like, I had a really horrible situation with horrible a waffle. Horrible spirit hunter. Iron. It's very different sentences. Yeah. A horrible situation with a waffle. Iron. No, no, no waffle. Demon, demon hunter. I like waffles, though. <laughs> yes. So this this is actually great. So you guys have a lot in common. <laughs> one's annoying, talks a lot. The other one's naive and has superpowers. It's like match made in uh, the apocalypse. <laughs> so let's have them actually do something. So, cause I like putting people on the spot. Someone tell me a place. A place. Not nothing specific like your mom's better. <laughs> The bar? Bar. bar. Two guys walk into a bar. <laughs> <laughs> Something less cliche. Um, what Trigon say? I said volcano. Volcano. In the volcano, on a volcano, next to a volcano. Hawaiian They're just, volcano. They're just the volcano. I'm sorry, what? A Hawaiian volcano. Hawaiian volcano. So, <laughs> There's lots of people there. Okay, vacation time. <laughs> Not bad. No, we, we can go with that. Okay, vacation time. Vacation time, these two people meet. Um, let's just assume you're not there together. So, um, <laughs> each, of you, each of you gets three lines. So, say Deadpool, uh, what was your other name? Rihanna? Uh, Elsie. Elsie. I don't know why I said Rihanna, I just pulled out of my uh, nether. <laughs> my apples. Okay, so, Elsie, Deadpool. Let's go with uh, Deadpool first. Elsie, Deadpool, Elsie, Deadpool, Elsie. You each get three lines in that order. So start, middle, 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 end. Somebody wants you dead. That's a huge problem, because I think I really want to stay alive. I really want to bake some cakes too. Oh my god, it's so hot in here. This volcano is crazy. I need to pay for rent. <laughs> You may, well, maybe living in a volcano may not be the best idea, uh, ma'am. <laughs> that is sir, and I don't need to worry, because good old Weapon X program. I suppose a whole lot of things fly in the United States. Cross dressing is good. Good for you. <laughs> okay, that's three lines each. Okay, so let's go with what they did good first. It was entertaining to say the least. Are you scratching? Uh, I got a utility bill. Okay. <laughs> this is crossing a line very close. Okay, so, oh, without getting there. Um, let's talk about what they did right. So it was entertaining. Um, what else? They see the character very well. Yes, that's true. Um, they, they, well, yeah, they pretty much responded how you kind of expect they would respond in. What else? Anything else you think was nice, funny, entertaining, right? Yes. Um, Elsie also, like, interacted with the setting. setting. Interacting with the setting, that is great. You use what you know I gave you. It wasn't just like two people meet in the supermarket and then you just talk. You don't mention that you're in a supermarket. You know, this thing. You you brought up the whole you're on vacation. You're on a volcano. It's hot. It's good. Anything else? Good contrast. Good contrast. Good contrast. Those lines were short. Hers were long. Yep, that is a great contrast. That works great because then you you really have a, a dichotomy that you can work with and you're, you can distinguish characters in your mind easily. Anything else? Deadpool is very straightforward. Okay. Thank you, Shelby Wubby. Well, I mean, he needs to pay rent. He needs this person dead. He's not going to be like, oh, hey, maybe we'll be buddy buddy person and I shoot you in the back. No, he's like, I need to pay rent. You need to die. How are we going to do this? Works. That's good. You you had a plan, you went with it. Yes. That's, that's great interesting for me to start talking about what happened wrong. So, Deadpool, you introduced with someone wants to kill you. Elsie. 
How did you respond to that? You started out pretty well with the, the I would love to be alive. That's a great response. Someone wants you dead. I don't want to die. I like living. It's fun. Um, but then after that you went to Cakes, you went to It's Hot in Here, or to Volcano. The, the train of thought got seriously derailed. It's pretty common though to just kind of get distracted. Um, <clears throat> sorry, back to me. Hi, it's pretty common to actually get really distracted. And she doesn't really stay in the negative too long um, and just kind of moves on um, unless she really needs to take action and, and kind of you know, tries to see the bright side of things right away and tries not to move into the, the darkness. I don't know, someone walks up to you and says, I want you dead. That'd be an action worth taking. Yeah. There, there would be a serious response there. And furthermore, that's... It's hard to take him seriously. He looks so cute. <laughs> <laughs> and welcome to cosplay dating. <laughs> See, from there, you get, um, first of all, that would have been great to know before we started. <laughs> That's just something you, you just had to give an exposition dump on that. We needed to know that beforehand, or you didn't convey that to us within your first few minutes. You just seemed flighty and like, uh, you said something about donuts, I'm gonna talk about the world! You know, it's, it, it, you're disconnected. Like, if, if I held, if I held Hawkeye up with a gun, and then she eats, she takes the gun and eats it as a donut. It's like, well, my premise is gone. Now I can't, I can't work with that. This, this, this thing has been derailed. Um... It distracted Deadpool. It did distract Deadpool, but he actually did it. The next line he said was, well, I need to pay rent, so you're gonna die. Yeah. He had the plan, he went with it. Um, yeah, let's get to new people then. Thank you, you do. Very common archetype there, where the person who hides his 
you know, inner secret, inner darkness, inner sadness with comedy. Don't don't look at me like that. <laughs> oh. <laughs> no. Okay, so um, I feel your pain. I don't even know where my pants are. Probably zombies. Yeah, most likely. Yeah. Probably but dead. I don't want to think about that. Or because it's high school, they're probably naked and zombies. That's yeah, it's, it's, it's really weird. It's only one full sad way. Um, so, we have a sad, but hides it with comedy guy, versus a klutzy, confident person who gets embarrassed. What kind of situation would they get involved in? Would they, they meet each other? Mutual foe. Mutual foe. That's, that's a great one. Because there's always a mutual foe, and unless they, they meet first, fight each other for no reason, and then team up to fight the foe, uh, they, they're always automatically friends, which is great. So you have a mutual foe, and we, we can do the same experiment. Can you give an example of a mutual foe? Okay, um, well, you fight zombies and depression. <laughs> Serious on this. And you fight. I fight the animals, the endangered animals become really big all of a sudden from the. Wait, you fight endangered animals? <laughs> Who said zombie panda? Endangered and zombie. Zombie animals, kind of. Of course they're very dead. Zombie Bali tiger. Endangered animals, really? Okay, so we have we have for some reason someone fighting endangered animals and zombies. So, um. Say you're fighting this thing, but you're not gonna fight the person now because that's just an action sequence, and we don't, you know, you'd, you'd swing a pipe and you'd do some clumsy but effective thing. <laughs> That'd be it. That's your interactions. Uh, given the three-line premise I gave before, have your pre-battle meeting. Your oh crap, look at that zombie panda. <laughs> Unless she has some sort of witty 
end remark of, like, oh, you're gone. Like, so no, no, I can't even think of something. We need to work with that. Like, now I can't do my magic move. Combo move. I don't know. Something. Um, your, your leaving cuts off any further interaction. Which is why when you left and I was like, you have another line. What are you doing? There's a problem there. And um, then the whole like pre-battle sequence, you, once you immediately start a fight or anything like that, a lot of things stop. A lot of action happens, but then you know your, your exposition stops. And you know, that can be useful. If you're writing a story or if you're doing any sort of thing like that, you, you do get to a point where if you get stuck, just have ninjas attack. Just have like, you know, SWAT team burst in through the window. You're like, oh crap, that gets the movie, the movie, the story, whatever, going again. But then, you know, at the very least, you just do Oh, let's do one more of those. You were very quick on that. And one more person, Sub-Zero. I'll, I'll come back to you Pokemon people at some point. Okay, so, who are you? Can you talk with that thing on? Yeah, and uh, I piss off my friends because I drink still right through here. <laughs> <laughs> um, my, I'm Sub-Zero, I'm the younger one, uh, Hui Lang, I think that's how you pronounce it. Um, throughout the story, I'm always searching for what happened to my older brother. Uh, he's very devoted, he... Um, brother or you? Um, Hui Lang, uh, my character. The younger Sub-Zero, me. You okay. Um, he's very devoted to uh, his mission. He, um, when he makes friends, he's very devoted to them. And he takes care of them, but before then, he doesn't care about anybody else's plans. Whatever else needs to happen, he just has to do what he came here to do. Driven, devoted, physical. Mm -hmm. Alright, we got some stuff there. And do you all? The female version of, um, Oh You Have a Desire. From Durarada. Oh, Durarada. <laughs> Durarada. <laughs> Japanese is difficult to say, Durarada. So it's L's and R's and H's. We just kind of go like that. Okay, go on. Um, he's an interview. Uh, the character is an information broker. He's psychotic. He claims to love all humans unconditionally, but he really just loves seeing their expressions when they're pushed to the limit and at their breaking point, to the point of suicide. He's a huge troll. <laughs> troll works. I was going to use another word that was not appropriate, but go on. Uh, he goes online a lot uh, with different usernames, pretending to be other people, well, pretending to be like different things. <laughs> oh my god. Go on. <laughs> he, he, uh, the character manipulates people, like the storylines, to like push everything forward. Uh, he just likes messing with people. Didn't you do an anti-bullying seminar? <laughs> <laughs> like, bring this person. <laughs> Okay, so, we have, um, let's find another place for these two people to meet. The mall. <laughs> I love that, because it's like, I'm gonna kill you people for fun, and I must revenge my brother. Let's go shopping! We get to the Orange Julius! Orange Julius is not a word. We find some shady people at the mall. <laughs> Okay, no, just, I won't go there. Um, okay, so, you two are at the mall with our three-point, three-line thing. Let's have uh, how you two would interact. <laughs> if you need to take a moment... Do you have anything in blue? Does it look like I work here? What are you supposed to be? Anyways. I'm a ninja. <laughs> <laughs> Aren't ninjas supposed to be stealthy? Kinda. You <laughs> have one more line each to finish this off. Out in the open. 
Oh, rumah sakit. Nah, isi ni. Nah, itu. Which you can do, which is even sometimes even greater, is that he's he's pretty much totally not in character. It was pretty much, or or you can believe, or you can almost believe that that's Sub Zero on his day off, on his like I must I must avenge my brother and do all this stuff. And, oh, I'm, I'm gonna go I'm gonna go over there. Like, I'm gonna go look for more blue clothes. It's like fight, fill, finish it. Oh, I'm done. Oh, I got blood. I can go get a new one. I'm done with oh. You know, it's like, you could, you could almost believe that his not in characterness was totally what Sub-Zero would do. It's just like, I need something to do. Um, and, and that works, because you can totally play with that. You can totally play with the idea of, of um, what's, what's the tiny girl's name? Uh, tiny uh, Shikigami name? What? Ichiro? Yes, Yachiru. Yeah, you can totally imagine her um, at some point, like, hulking out, you know? <laughs> you're, you're watching Bleach all of a sudden, you know, something happens to Kipachi, and she's like, and you're like, what just happened? <laughs> and you don't know, but it's awesome! You have one of those sorts of things happen, and it's totally not in character, but it's so entertaining that you're just like, screw it, it's fine. Uh, I'll, I'll, I'll accept it. So that's something that, you know, you work. Um, yeah, uh, I suppose to go to what you did wrong, I have to say, is, is so much that, um, and it's not so much you did wrong, it's just you weren't prepared for it, which is difficult to do, which is why we're here in this panel right now, to prepare ourselves, um, is that 
you had no way to end the scene. You, you just, you saw him like, ah, now I'm gone, and you're like, <laughs> Which is totally fine, totally acceptable. Um, in a situation like this, where we're practicing, if you were on stage, I'd be like, but you're not on stage, you're here with us, and we, we love and accept you for who you are. Yeah. <laughs> yes. So yeah, that, that worked, and um, besides the idea of more preparation on what you think, you know, a crazy troll person would do if Sub-Zero just disappeared. Or, you know, turn around, turn, turn around. now I'm gone. <laughs> if he did one of those, you know, just think about it, and then you'll be prepared for next time, which is the whole idea. All right, thank you very much. This is the music everyone can do together. So everyone stand up. Like that. No, you don't. What? <laughs> what? <laughs> Sit in the back. <laughs> I thought you had a problem. I do have a problem. It's just standing for long periods of time. <laughs> that just blew my mind. <laughs> Jesus, for a second, stand up. Oh my god! What? <laughs> for those of you who can't see, she, she, she came in in a wheelchair. Which apparently, I don't know. Okay, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Stand up for a wheelchair. You can sit down if it really is a problem for you standing for, for long periods of time. That's... Okay, <sighs> <laughs> so... Um... Shake, 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 shake out everything of you been sitting for a while. If you've been sitting, because you've all been walking down. I should just stand up. I don't want to do this while I'm sitting So, yeah. Let's, let's do something physical. With, um... Oh, um, we put this down. Let me build a close to the face. You guys will come up. Yeah. 